most software comes in two flavors. It either doesn't work or it's not useful. Our, our software comes in the flavor of it's very useful, sometimes deadly. We're stopping terrorism with data protection and we're doing innovation with jobs. And you know what? You'll find that the lagging indicator value of that is much bigger than people realize. And they will find that out too. And today I can share with you that I have confirmation that ARK Invest just bought 20,000 shares in the company. Later in this video, I'm going to explain why ARK buying is a huge deal and what that means for the stock price in the future. But first, let me give an overview of the company and discuss why it's special. Palantir is currently defined as a data analytics platform for government and enterprise today, but they have much bigger goals. I do think Palantir is poised to become one of the world's most valuable software companies. Starting from a somewhat modest $20 billion market cap, quite simply, the long-term opportunity here is huge if all goes right. In my opinion, the company's story is Tesla-esque in so many ways. I'll get to all of them. First, Palantir was co-founded by Peter Thiel, the tech entrepreneur and venture capitalist who worked alongside Elon Musk as part of the PayPal Mafia. CEO Alex Karp is another founder and the face of the company. I'll supplement this video with clips of him discussing the company, and here's him responding to Palantir's holistic similarities with PayPal. Two key components to that. One, what the methodology that was developed at PayPal, which was basically the use of human analysis to reduce fraud. So they had this massive problem of, of essentially cyber fraud and was putting them out of business. They tried algorithmic approaches, so they, you go and you get algorithms and you try to reduce the fraud by applying those algorithms to large data sets. Now what we found when we went to the intelligence community is unlike PayPal, uh, they had uh, lots of unstructured data, the data stores were much larger, uh, they weren't built to communicate, you had very, very technical users and non-technical users, and you had this massive issue of privacy protection. So. Um, and collaboration. So in the PayPal context, you allow any user to see all the data. But in the governmental or even consumer context, you can't allow end users to see every bit of data. They only get to see the subset they're allowed to see. Palantir Gotham, a platform used to identify patterns within existing data sets. This includes features such as Graph, an interface for users to explore data, and Ava, an artificial intelligence system that scans large data sets for patterns and connections. These proprietary technologies are mostly used for government and nonprofit applications. However, then we have Palantir Foundry, a data warehouse to help companies collect and analyze information. This includes Monocle, a graphical data interface, and AI machine learning, a statistical package for data scientists. And this, on the other hand, as I said, is more focused towards the private sector. Together, these two platforms, Gotham and Foundry, define Palantir. If their financials catch up to their ambition of saving the world from all wrongdoings, the company stands to reap massive rewards. After all, the AI software industry has been forecasted to have a greater than 40% annual compound growth rate through 2025, which would mean that the industry could generate trillions of dollars in business value. Tesla is attacking trillions in value as well with their mission, and we see Palantir now taking steps in the right direction with this one as well. So the question is, can Palantir pull everything together and take advantage of the huge opportunity they have ahead of them? Obviously, that remains to be seen. The most aggressive analysts might even see PLTR as the next IBM or Microsoft since it's one of the best positioned companies to succeed in creating a unified AI and data analytics platform, which could push its valuation well beyond $200 billion, a 10x away. There are a few key factors concerning Palantir's operating model that enables its success in creating and capturing value. The first of which is talent. The company was fortunate to have access to talented engineers in Silicon Valley who were dedicated to their mission and tackling the world's biggest problems. Since then, they have relocated away from the valley, but now they are a big enough name to retain and continue to attract talent of the highest levels. The second, rapid pace of innovation and development. Gotham developers have been involved in open source development, which allows them to take advantage of the network effects of community bug testing and the development of additional features, particularly with geography calculations, accelerating their development successes. The third of which is secrecy. Despite the availability of open source developments on some platforms, a focus on secrecy leads itself to protecting customer information and preventing customer base invasions. Making privacy a cultural value makes the goal of obtaining true privacy that much easier. 
Having clients like IBM and working on crisis responses, R&D, cybersecurity, anti-fraud, and human trafficking gives the company unparalleled access to data, just raw data, the interpretation of which is useful to the government and agencies from around the country and around the world. Moreover, the role of big data has only just begun. While Palantir focuses on the high-value implications of data analytics, big data platforms will be equally useful in a number of industries such as manufacturing, telecommunications, healthcare, etc. Here's Alex Karp, CEO, discussing that directly. You have a problem when you're building any kind of motor or doing any kind of drilling. So we're well known in the industrial drilling context, in the flight context, in the automotive context, although we're, we don't talk about that much publicly, but um, you have essentially a massive amount of data, but it's very hard to figure out or predict which part is likely to break under which conditions in a motor. And knowing that is the difference between making a lot of money or much more money than your competitors or much less money than your competitors. But these things actually have to be done on the line as well, so you need a product that interfaces with everyone in the company, the CEO, the, the managers, but also the auto workers, that, that has an engine that can power that, and then a front end that they can work with intuitively. And the thing that's very special here that I believe Silicon Valley is creating innovation without jobs, and it's really hurting our, our world. And what, what's very special about Foundry is that it creates innovation with jobs. So the factory worker, there's 1,500 people at Chrysler using our product, 1,500 people who are technical, but they're not PhDs in, 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 in computer science or math. What's made this company special is not that we're secretive. It's not that we're an enterprise software. It's that we've been very focused on fighting terrorism with data protection. And what we're recently now very focused on as well is innovation with jobs. Now, why should we care? Well, because if you don't have jobs, you're not going to have democracy. And I think, you know, I mean, obviously we were born in Silicon Valley and we're of Silicon Valley in some ways, but but this, this, this movement towards innovation with no jobs is, is, is really hurting our society. What's made our product successful is when we find a convergence between philosophical, moral, and technical things, and we bring it together. And that's actually been the secret of PG, or our government product. On the commercial side, really finding something where workers can use the product. And once the worker starts using the product, they're like really valuable. Because uh, the, the worker on the front line can begin to do something that heretofore that no worker could do. Actually, a computer alone can't do it. So your point, um, Alex, is that Silicon Valley tech companies should be doing more to promote job creation, and Palantir software is helping that effort? Well, I mean, you're being diplomatic. I think they should do more to stop destroying jobs, and we're doing, we're doing innovation with jobs. The West Coast of America is eating up every job on the planet, and that's a problem for our society. Now, maybe other companies don't want to be involved in that, that's their choice. Just like many companies don't want to be involved in stopping terrorists, that's their choice. Uh, or protecting data, that's their choice. Our choice as a company is that we want to be involved in this and we are driving really, really hard on this. And by the way, to your, to your viewers, what's been very interesting is the famous saying in the Valley, ask for money, get advice, ask for advice, get money. You know, the more we focused on these deep philosophical issues, the more we've crushed it as a business. The stock popped on opening day sold off below $9 a few days later, and now has been recovering ever since. Part of that sell-off was company insider selling. But no, this is not an immediate red flag. Please, this is not Nikola. This is a real company that has real clients and employees that have been waiting 17 years to get liquidity on their ownership of the company. Sure, it would be great for everyone if they could hold on to 100% of their shares, but you can't blame them for cashing out a few percentage points to have money to spend. I'm not saying that I would, but I hope you get the point. The bottom line, I predict this stock will be very volatile no matter what. It went up to $11.41 and then down to $8.90, so that's a 22% delta between the two extremes. Not too bad considering that would be 34% for Snowflake using my same math. Snowflake, of course, being the other recent AI and data IPO. Overall, Palantir stock probably won't move as fast as Tesla stock, let's say, but it can definitely catch a slipstream and start moving one way or the other in short order. To me, the company pushing further into the private sector will unlock an incredible growth trajectory. But the more important announcement is that of ARK buying stock in the company. 
ARK Invest, with their new investment in PLTR in their ARK W fund, is predicting a minimum of 15% yearly compound stock price growth over the next five years, since they only choose companies that they predict will double in that time period. That's very bullish. Sure, it's a minuscule position considering ARK's size, but they aren't playing around. To them, it's likely dipping their toe in the water, and I can't wait to see if they add to this small position over time. Nevertheless, this is a tremendous vote of confidence from Kathy Wood and the whole ARC team. They care about long-term growth and value, not just about buying the newest IPO. But it appears both have come together in this scenario. If you're wondering, 15% yearly compound stock price growth over the next five years comes out to a doubling from this point, which would put the stock at approximately $20 per share. Considering how successful ARK Invest has been, I am sure the stock will get there eventually. Will it take five years? I'd say it might be closer to five months if I had to choose. I just don't think there's any way the analysts can ignore this company any longer. It seems the mainstream media has pretty much been putting out negative article after negative article around how the IPO was a disaster. And that is simply not the case. Nor does it really matter. What matters is the company, their growth, and their future. And I can't wait to see what they have to say on their Q3 2020 earnings call, the first time they will have a conference call with analysts and investors. I'll let you know when that's coming up. We are going to be the most important software company in the world, and people will figure out what that's valued over a long period of time. And we're very comfortable with investors toying around. It could be like this, it could be like that. We are going to deliver the world's best software with the world's most efficient way of delivering it. Investors will decide what's that, what's that wor is worth to them. And I think you'll find in, in a number of years that there will be a consensus. Palantir is a truly special software company that is arguably the most important software company in the world. Do you own Palantir stock? Are you going to wait and see how the trading plays out going forward before you make a purchase? Or are you still weary of the company? Leave it all in the comments. Now hit like if this video and all of my research was helpful to you. And, of course, more epic content is on the way. So hit subscribe for that. Until then, peace.